Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to the Octopus Deploy 2021 Q4 release. This is our fourth and final release of 2021, and I'm pleased to share it with you. In this release, we're introducing native support for Amazon Elastic Container Service. This includes a new guided ECS automation step that's opinionated by default and extensible for full control. No custom scripting or task definitions. We're also introducing our new TypeScript API client, which provides cross-platform integration with Octopus, running on Node.js and available in the NPM ecosystem. This makes it easy to automate and script tasks using one of the world's most popular programming languages and platforms. Finally, this release also includes early access to our highly anticipated config as code feature. This allows you to evolve your deployment process alongside your application code. Our config as code solution gives teams the full power of Git balanced with the usability of Octopus. We're also shipping early access of our new Visual Studio Code plugin, which allows you to edit your deployment config files directly in your favorite text editor. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can deploy a web app to ECS, and we'll also see how to use our new TypeScript API client to integrate with Octopus. Let's get started. I'd like to introduce you to the Octopus Samples instance. If you've never seen this before, it's an Octopus Cloud instance full of useful deployment and runbook examples. A lot of the projects listed in here are linked to from the Octopus docs, but it's a great resource just to explore and look at different automation approaches. Today, we're gonna to focus on how we can deploy a web app to ECS. But before we do that, we're, let's take a look at our infrastructure. You can see I have a bunch of infrastructure here. I have four environments, dev test, staging, and prod, and a collection of targets, etc. There's a few things I'd like to highlight. First, I'd like to look at our accounts. Here you can see we have access to Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. In our case, we're gonna focus on AWS, but this allows you to centralize the accounts and subscriptions for your cloud service providers in a single place and manage it and secure it appropriately. In this case, we're focused on AWS. And if we take a look, you can see this is very simple. I just have my AWS access key and secret key, giving me appropriate access to my AWS account. Now I'd like to head over to our environments and take a look at our dev environment. I have two deployment targets here, but there's only one that I'd like to take a look at, and that is my ECS deployment target. Now you can see here, this target captures everything for me to be able to deploy to an ECS cluster. I specify my AWS account, which we just saw, my region, and the cluster name, and that's it. With this configured, I can then go and configure projects to deploy containers to this cluster. And that's pretty much it for our infrastructure. Now, before I head over to our project, I would like to point out one other thing. And that is we now have a native support for Amazon's Elastic Container Registry. So this means that if you use ECR, you can add it as a feed, store your containers in there, and then access them in your deployments. So with that out of our way, Let's head over to our AWS ECS project. You can see that my deployment process is fairly simple. I have a few Slack notifications for when a deployment starts and ends or if there's a failure, but then I have one deploy Amazon ECS service step. The previous iterations of this deployment process before we introduced this step was many, many steps and they were all custom scripts. So now let's take a look at our Amazon ECS step. This new step is designed to help guide you through the process of configuring an ECS deployment. It's focused on configuring your task definitions and the services that run them. It has built-in validation, useful deployment feedback, and error messages without needing to jump into the AWS console or do things manually. If we take a look, there's a lot of standard elements here about where the deployment will be executed on what roles, and then we get into the task definition. So your task name, task size, and other standard configuration details, network config, etc. 
Where this really aids you is once we get into the container definitions and some of the other features. So if we take a look at one of these container definitions, you can see everything is centralized and we have a lot of rich information to help you configure it. So we have a lot of built-in help and links to the appropriate AWS docs to help guide you through the process of configuration. You can see we have a lot of the configuration settings shared here. So everything from like the source of the container, in this case it's ECR, authentication method. If we scroll down, we have port mappings, there's health check details, but also environment and environment variables. So once I get here, you can configure all of this and map it back to your Octopus project variables. So it's consistent and straightforward to configure. There's a couple other useful features that I'd like to highlight. If we scroll down and look at our deployment options, we've got a really useful feature to avoid stuck deployments. If you've ever deployed a CloudFormation stack that gets stuck in a failure and retry loop, this is really, really useful. You have the ability to specify a wait option. And one of the most useful ones is to specify a timeout. So if I specify a timeout here, and when I deploy release and that time passes, Octopus will fail the deployment. And then what you can do in subsequent steps is clean things up appropriately for your needs. I'd also like to highlight our built-in validation. As I said, this is a guided step. It's been designed to help you configure your ECS deployments efficiently. So if we take a look at task size here, there's only certain valid combinations. So if I change the task CPU to an invalid combination and click save, you get a clear error message straight away. You don't have to save it. If you don't have to attempt a deployment to try and get that feedback. It's fast and efficient. The final thing that I'd like to do is to export the underlying CloudFormation template for this step. Our new step focuses on creating and updating task definitions and the associated services that run them. It doesn't cover every feature of ECS. If you need a feature that's not included, you can use this export functionality to move to a CloudFormation deployment. So let's see that in action. So what I can do here is just click Copy Configuration, click Close, and now what I could do is I could add a new step. Just go into AWS, deploy an AWS CloudFormation template. And in this step, what I can do, so I can come down, I'd specify all the other values, but I could add my CloudFormation template. Add it here, click Done. The other thing that we do with the exported template, we parameterize anything that needs to change as a part of the deployment. So what this does is allows you to move to this other step and then upgrade your deployment to suit your needs. So our new guided ECS automation step, it's opinionated by default, but it's also extensible for full control. This means I can use the deploy to ECS step for most of my needs, but if I go beyond that, I can get full control and configure my deployment exactly the way I need. So now let's create a release and deploy it. First, I'm going to update my version. I'd like to point out that I can change the versions of the containers that I'm using without changing my deployment process. And when I deploy to ECS, Octopus will update my task definition and the service automatically. And so there's no clicking around the AWS console or no tricky scripting or any of that. Octopus takes care of it all for me. So with that said, in this case, I'm going to take all my latest versions. So I'm going to save that release. And now I'm going to deploy to development. So my deployment was successful. So if we head over to the AWS Management Console and take a look at ECS, we can navigate to my cluster and we can see that my service is running or it's active, it has been updated. If we jump to the tasks, we can see that it's running as well. 
Now I'd like to shift gears and highlight our new TypeScript API client for Octopus. Our TypeScript API client provides cross-platform integration with Octopus using the Node.js NPM ecosystem. This makes it easy to automate and script tasks with Octopus using one of the world's most popular programming languages and platforms. I'm currently looking at the GitHub repo for our new API client. So you can see it's completely open source. You can submit issues, submit pull requests, etc. So everything's in the open. So it's nice to have a new client, but how can we use it? So looking back at Octopus, I'm going to take a look at a couple of runbooks. So I have two runbooks in my AWS ECS project. The one I want to take a look at is this restart ECS tasks in a service. So this is a runbook essentially to restart a, a collection of services or a web app. Um, and what it does, if we take a look, it's very simple. It's just running an AWS CLI command, force a new deployment, updating a service. This forces a new deployment of the latest task definitions and which essentially restarts all the services. This is a useful runbook for times when things are completely unresponsive, you have a stuck deployment, or you need to force a refresh to ensure everything is up to date. This is a useful runbook. And with this, you get all the advantages of runbooks being it's self-service. It can be published so that other teams can run it with a click of button. You don't need to worry about authentication, dependent tools, etc. I'd like to trigger this runbook from another system. There's a range of options, but I'd like to highlight how you can do this with our new TypeScript client. This script is mostly straightforward. I have some imports at the top, I specify some configuration, and then I just go through retrieving all the required resources, which is the project, the environment, uh, and the runbook, and then finally executing it. But in general, there's nothing terribly complicated here. So now let's jump back to my command line and try and run this. So now I'm gonna run this using Node.js. So if I execute that, It'll start showing the status, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back to Octopus and just watch to see the task appear. And there we can see it pops up and it's executing. And just like that, it ran successfully. So what we've seen here is that it's quite easy to integrate with Octopus using TypeScript and then execute it using Node.js. This allows us to integrate Octopus with the systems that your team and company use with a cross-platform ecosystem that you're comfortable with. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below. If you'd like to try something mentioned in this video, head over to octopus.com trial and get started today. Happy deployments.